So that is the only place that you'll find the actual requirements to post a privacy policy. There's also a, a fabulous law called Shine the Light. If you're sharing your, your databases or your list with somebody else for that third party marketing use, then you need to have to give an opt-out opportunity or if the California writes you a letter and says, tell me who, then you have to give them an accurate list that you can share that data with. And if you're, if you're a national, if you're a national nonprofit, if you focus on California and Massachusetts is the other one, if, if you're, if, and if you're not, if you're in Georgia, if you're going to get a donor from California, make sure it's a chicken. Right. <laughs> um, California often a trendsetter and it's usually having the most strict standards among all the state's laws. Here's what we've been talking about. We've been spending quite a bit of time talking about the state breach notice laws. Almost all of the states have them now, 46 out of the 50. Now here's something really important to know. There's two really big takeaway points. This doesn't apply to all this doesn't apply to all data. It applies only to the listed type of data, which is generally going to be your first name, your, your last name in combination with another really sensitive piece of data, a social security number, driver's license number or financial account plus access code. So if you have a database that has names, phone numbers, and addresses, and it's breached, you're not in this world. You don't have to worry about it. It's really when you, you get into this type of data. Um, and it, you, know, you wind up having to notify the affected individuals, sometimes the regulatory authorities. There's another um, really important takeaway that is, it doesn't really matter which state you're in, it's the state that the people whose data you have is in laws apply. So normally everyone just goes ahead and complies with all 50. And their company is set up to do this for you know, a cool million here, a cool million there. They'll help you. They're glad to. ratcheting up everyone's ratcheting yeah, up. level of attention to this. So yeah, over time, it's going to have that effect. Um, that's why I said I kind of look at this now from a state of privacy across the board. I protect all of that because each state comes up with new, their own procedures to their own policies. Uh, since, since it applies more um, based on whose data you have and where you are, I won't go into the Georgia code really in great depth. Uh, data destruction laws are both on the federal and the state level. If you've got some of this sensitive data, don't just throw it away in the trash can. You know, you can take, just take it out and, and, and shred it. That's an easy, you know, cost-effective uh, means of compliance. PPI standards are something that we've already spoken about. Um, these are the standards that Visa and MasterCard puts you under for taking credit card data. Um, Nevada last year actually made it uh, the law in Nevada that you must comply with PPI standards if you have that kind of data. So not only do you have a contractual breach if you have a breach, but you also have a government uh, proceeding on your hands if you violate that in Nevada. A Here's lot of you hire people to do this stuff, right? I mean, you're not necessarily using a company and sending credit card numbers. holding your vendors accountable for some of these compliance requirements. So if you have had two clients that have had two cars and they stop yeah. and have no idea what to do. <laughs> You're all up to speed on this. Well, uh, I think part of what we're saying here, if here's the way to avoid having the data that puts you into this um, situation, I think that would be the first thing to look at as you know, as nonprofits. Don't keep someone's credit card information. Use it once and get rid of it. Don't keep that uh, credit card number on file. It'll just cause you problems. Some, similarly, every social security number. Gone. Right. You have to have evidence where your proper history, your documentation. Remember we talked about about process and checklists. Part of that process to make sure that once you gather that information, if you can prove that you don't have it. Yeah, quickly through math.
Massachusetts, I'll get to you. Um, the, the burdensome nature of the new Massachusetts requirements, it is filtering up throughout, throughout all of the, um, you know, the corporate communities. They're requiring a written security program of, approved by the board, training programs, and also there's requirements for contractors uh, that, uh, that take effect in March of next year. So it's this person who would be charged with making sure that if you have this type of data within your organization, it's traveling it around in an encrypted manner. If there's a laptop loose, you know, that one, the whole laptop has to be encrypted, similarly with a flash drive. So that's what they do, like if you are coming to Amazon, and they're saying, they're, they're hitting your credit card every time you order a single book. So right. what they're saying, they're keeping it encrypted, it's unique at somewhere. Yeah, they've got it in, I mean, Based on everything we know about enforcement, they have it locked down, um, and they're not, you know, traveling it across the unsecured, um, you know, internet or, or um, in a physical manner. It's possible, but it's not necessarily a question. Right. I think Amazon's probably. <laughs> yeah. Like PlayStation. Like PlayStation, right? Well, they, but you know, Amazon grew up in this environment. It's a relatively new company. They're going to probably do better than an old gaming company, you know. Yeah. <laughs> to delete data effectively. You should. You actually need to go with a, a program or a vendor that will properly do that for you because otherwise it's still sitting there. Very good, very good point to make. I use a powerful drill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Wow, that's amazing question. Do you have a YouTube drill? I guarantee you. You can find it. Oh, great. They're with my high. Fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, you might not be able to afford a data destruction company, but if you drill through a hard drive, you're showing that you're trying, right? You got that in your side. There's software you can buy called Credit and stuff like that that'll secure it. Here's lots of things. Here's things that I've got. Like I said, With regard to uh, social security numbers, if you have those, um, I would recommend that you try not to have them. You know, really ask yourself, do you need those within your organization? Because again, you'll cause all of these requirements to fall down on their heads and there's different requirements across the states about social security numbers. Some of them require special privacy policies about those. So try to get rid of them if you can. Uh, some of you have probably been um, in the shoes of a as a service provider to a financial institution or to a HIPAA regulated company. If so, they deliver you a contract that they tell you is non-negotiable. Indeed, those really are non-negotiable. You're not going to get out from under the regulatory requirements. So again, the first advice would be try to make sure you don't see their data. If you can avoid it, make it so that you don't have to sign the contract. But if you do have to sign the contract, you're going to have to really weigh uh, the burdens of the contract. I mean, there's some that are easy. Use the data only for authorized purposes. Uh, let them know if there is an authorized, if there's unauthorized um, access to it. But the truly ugly, and especially under a lot of these HIPAA business associate agreements, Encryption and storage and transit, penetration testing, written access logs, things that you don't have. The smaller organizations really just cannot possibly meet um, in terms of a bar. Here's one of the, um, the new bills that's coming down the pike that would, if it goes through um, all of Congress, finally give us um, unified privacy laws all across the country, uh, the Gary Bill. And these would include Notice prior to the collection of personal information, opt-in or opt-out consent mechanism, depending on the sensitivity of the data and its intended use. If this comes through, there's going to be a big fallout for um, the advertising companies and for the data mining companies because they're going to have to suddenly reach out to you, give you notice, and give you a chance to opt out of what they're doing. Their business model will be upset due to this. It oh, yeah. It actually applies to um, covered entities. Anyone who's got more than 5,000 individuals 
but then a single year of data. So actually, I wonder with my own contact list in my Outlook, would I be an app entity? <laughs> and uh, Andy's slide says, so what about donors? Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. This one does apply to nonprofits. So we're going to look for that. And the more locked down your um, your program is now, um, probably the better in, in the better stead you'll be when when a law like this comes down the pike. So um, we, we've talked about uh, the law, and you know, one of the things, we're, we're running out of time, so I want to try to get practical quickly uh, as we finish up. The, you know, the, the question is, okay, so we've scared you, there's a lot of law that applies, there's a lot of law coming down the pike. What do you do? I mean, how do you get after this? So the first thing to do is figure out, I mean, very practically, First thing to do is figure out what data do you have, right? What data do you collect? Where does it come from? Is it sensitive data or not? And just apply common sense. And if you need help with, with um, figuring out whether it's sensitive data or regulated data, just call Pro Bono Partnership, and one of us will, you know, they'll, they'll get one of us over there to help you walk through that process. Um, but figure out what data you're collecting and how you're managing it, how you're storing it, disposing of it. Where you're sending it, just apply a little, a little analysis of what data is coming in. Is it sensitive? And then when you get to that set of sensitive data, what are we doing with it? Are we doing anything to take care of it and manage it properly? It, it, it's, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you can go to great lengths on this stuff, but at your level, the thing I want you to realize is, you know, you started really getting after this two years ago. Home Depot just, you know, hasn't been after it that long. Yeah, and been after it for quite some time. Yeah. Um, it's just that it rolls more into a program, so we're not running it all the time. Right. But the point is, two years ago, Home Depot had a mess. That, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm speaking from, I'm paraphrasing. But let's, but, uh, whether, you had a mess or not, whether you had a mess or not, Sony had a mess. It's an unauthorized paraphrase. <laughs> Regulators and the law enforcement people are going to give you the benefit of the doubt because you're focused, you're a legitimate nonprofit focused on an important cause. You get the benefit of the doubt from those things. That's why we, we look in preparation for this to find cases where nonprofits had been prosecuted or there aren't very many of them out there. So take that, take, don't be too scared. What you should be scared of, in my opinion, is hurting your reputation with your business. That's your biggest risk. If, you, if your donors think that you're not going to take care of the information, they're not going to give it to you. Right? And so I, I want you to really get focused on pragmatic approaches to managing this information. Things like lock your file cabinet. I, I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm going to say it because I've been in, in these organizations and I've walked around and seen unlocked file, file cabinets. It, it, it's very common. And put passwords on your systems, on your computer systems, so that and make sure that only people that need to have access to the data have access to it. These are not complicated things to do, but you need to have somebody focused on doing this. What one of the things to put on the list is when employees leave or volunteers leave, and they have access to passwords and computers. You gotta lock it down. So that's one of the things is is that some of the we don't necessarily think about it, but employees who leave who might have a beef, who have access to your computer systems or access to your data, they can do a lot of damage. So yeah. put that one on your list too. Well, and there are lots of things. That's one. There's, I mean, you need a you may need a privacy policy. You may not. That'd be our our deal. You may need to have some records management procedures. I think you do need that no matter what. Uh, but what I'm trying to, while we, as we begin to wrap up, I want you to think about, I don't want you to leave here scared because you're already doing things. Everybody, everybody has some policies and procedures that you can do. And we can help. Pro Bono Partnership, the, the people that are focused here, we, we will help.
So um, Kim's going to go through a little bit on privacy policy and then I think we'll be done. I, I know a lot of you may be in the process of determining whether you need to have a privacy policy. Um, the answer would be yes. If you already have one out there, you need to update it pro properly to make sure that it's still accurate as to what you're doing. Um, and also, if your constituency is desiring one and demand one and you need one because your competition doesn't, then yes, you probably need one. Um, if you have only a few folks in California and you're doing something online, uh, then in theory you need one. You can ask yourself if you know th that little fact is enough to make you really, uh, you know, need to take the effort to write an entire privacy policy just because of a, the possibility of a California action. It may not be enough right now to um, to actually go ahead and uh, cause you to write a privacy policy if otherwise you wouldn't. Um, as we've said, other than that, you actually there's no requirement that you do it right now. And in fact, I might say, don't do it, because there's some legislation coming down the pike that probably will require it, and you will need to redo it anyway at that time, because likely what we do for you, um, even with a great lawyer, will need to be redone at that time. We'll probably, you know, the, the emerging legislation will have um, covered all of the bases. So attractive is maybe wait, wait a few months. Wait a few months. As you do a privacy policy, if you do, ask yourself, you know, are there any laws that dictate what you have to disclose? Um, and as we've spoken of before, take a look at what the users expect. Make sure you put in there, um, if there's anything that may cause them surprise, that's actually under the way the FTC thinks, uh, the, the area that you have to do the most notice about. Uh, and then the, the key thing is, look at your capabilities. If only one part of your organization is um, encrypting don't say that your organization encrypts, because otherwise um, you're basically over-promising. Leave that out uh, instead of saying you know, a blanket statement. Because over-promising is, is exactly where a lot of these organizations have gotten into trouble. A little list of best practices. I'm not going to go through them, but you may need to um, refer to these as you um, draft a privacy policy. One thing that I've done with a lot of my clients is I create a little mini summary in a box right at the top that's sort of the takeaway points that everyone's wondering about. You know, do you share my data with third parties? What do you do about email? So I, I put a little box and it um, summarizes so that people really appreciate that when they come in and don't want to read the whole thing. Here's a little statement of the no-nos with privacy policy. If you've got a privacy policy that says we don't share with third parties, we don't sell to third parties, and you've got this tremendous opportunity just this once. I think we're going to do it to make a little bit of money. That's a no-no. Just this once is usually the wrong way of thinking. Well, actually, let's just change what's up on the on the website. Let's just change our privacy policy. This time we'll say, yes, we do do that, um, changing the rules in the middle of the game. Again, like we've seen, that's a no-no as well, because there's a specific pro procedure you have to go through in order to do that. You need notice and consent of your and Andy, repeat after me with me. Remember, privacy policy unenforced is worse than none at all. It's plaintiff's exhibit number one. If you have a privacy policy and you're not doing it, you are better off not having one. Back to records management. We probably don't have enough time. We don't have time. Yeah. So records management is the how. It kind of gets into the, the process and procedure about how you actually there are specific ways to do that that we can help you with um, pro bono direct you to lawyers and other practitioners that can help you with that. Great answer. Thanks for all your good questions. Wow, thank you all so much. Oh my gosh, this is great. Uh, give them another applause.
It's good. Everyone has their own stub. It was a two-parter, so you kept one and the other one went in the bowl. As long as you don't have two of them in your hand, you're good. And as long as you have one. Yes. Everybody's got one, you've only got one. Okay, great. So what we have today is compliments of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. We have really kind of tickled your mind today, right? You're just like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. So one of the best elixirs for that is music. So what we have here today is we have four tickets to an ASO concert. So not only can you go for yourself, but you get to invite the other people so you get to just take a deep breath and just kind of, you know. <laughs> 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 Nine seven five two three four. Nine seven five two three four. 